Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to another RMA Fire tutorial. I am glad to be back. I've been out because I was working on, on directing and creating the content for Maluma's new show. I can't wait to share it with you guys. Anyway, let's jump in here and have a look. So I dropped on a camera. I've put down my translation a little bit changed and my 1920 by 1080 camera. So I'm going to start by dropping down a sphere. And as you can see, the sphere gives me an idea of the scale of the scene. The scale is good. Um, and I'm going to drop down a curve, a Bezier curve. So let's just draw the path that we want the liquid to follow. So this, something like this seems okay. And then you can come here and click this button and kind of like select your points and hit T on your viewport to kind of move them around if you wanted to. Um, but we're not going to do that. I think whatever we want to do, whatever we have here, it's, it's fine for now. Um, let me see. I want to control straight line hold drag point with no curve active with the right click but let's see so you hit the right click you can move your points to kind of like place a curve and make whatever you want to it um, but I think for now this is this is totally fine something like this will do the trick let's do a resample and uh, on a resample let's just let's do something like this much more lower resolution and then we're gonna convert this to a nerve curve um, let's do nerves curve There we go, that smooths it out. And then we duplicate this and let's make this a polygon. And let's select the points. What we wanna do is we wanna isolate this point here, which would be zero. So just delete everything but the point zero. And to do that, you just hit zero here and we select points and we do non-select it. And that's gonna give us this zero right here. Let's go ahead and copy a sphere onto that point. And this is going to be our emitter. We want to do a points from volume. And these are going to be the points that we're going to be emitting from. Let's just uh, move them around a little bit and let's make this our source. So we have our source here and then we have our curve. I'm going to go ahead and make both of them red. And let's go ahead and drop down a top network. Um, We're going to drop down a flip object and a flip um, solver. So let's go ahead and connect this here and this right here. And for default, what we want to do is first off, we want the emitter, the emission to come from the source. We want to make this particles and we want to make this a particle source. Now we've got a base, but if we hit play, you'll see that nothing happens. Um, so what we need to do is give it some forces. We're going to do a pop curve force. And we're going to select our curve right here. And this gives us the, the area in which the forces are going to be controlling. We're going to reduce the maximum influence radius. And let's hit play and see what we get. So that that's already pretty promising. That like that's pretty decent. Um, 
we're, we you know you want to hit this so that it plays real time we're gonna increase the resolution and then I'll show you guys how to mesh this so to increase the resolution we're gonna come here copy this parameter and then we're gonna paste actually copy this parameter in here actually you know I did it right the particle separation you want to copy this and paste the relative reference on the point separation That way, when we come in here, we increase this number and it's gonna give us more points. So let's do something like 0 0.02 or 0 0.3. Let's hit play. And then it's gonna give us a default sim. Now, um, it's really not super interesting. So let's do a few things that is gonna make the simulation look much more interesting. The first thing you wanna do is drop down a pop force. Let's increase the amplitude and reduce the swirl scale and and let's see what that gives us you can see that we already have much more interesting stuff happening there and now the other thing that I want to do is kind of randomize it a little bit in in some areas right so that like it's not really all entirely affected by the same um, force so we come out here and we do a dot network, actually a dot net. Jesus, attribute dot. <laughs> Sorry guys. It's coming here and drop down a turbulence. And we're gonna grab the position and connect this to our collar, and that's gonna give us a random, um, you know, random value here. And then I'm gonna bind the export to call this drag. So this is going to randomize our drag based on this noise that we created. So now we can do a pop drag. And I'm going to do a vex expression. And we want to say air resist is equal to fit01 rand at pt num. And we're going to fit this range between 0 and a 1. But then we're going to multiply this by our drag. Let's hit play and see what this gives us. So that's definitely a lot. Um, so instead of PT num, let's do drag here. So now some of our points are gonna get zero drag and the other ones are gonna get one. But it's still a lot. So let's do multiply by 0.01. Let's um, see what's happening. So yeah, our drag is working. Zoom point one. And you can see how it actually does break it up quite a bit. Um, so now it's kind of like a push and play. Now we're gonna need like a uh, suction scale to be a little higher. That way they're going to be pushed in more towards the center of our curve. And that's kind of working. Like maybe we need more. More of this. So you can see this really, it's cool because it breaks it up and it gives us some some particles moving more than others and more affected than others. That's kind of what we want to have. Now let's see what happens if we add this real back. And that's about playing with the swirl scale so that we can break this up a little bit more. And it's cool when some of the particles just like don't quite make it because you're gonna get a few like pretty interesting splashes happening. You can see that it's already like pretty um, like I don't wanna I don't wanna push the I, I don't want it to be like entirely in the center because you you miss all of these little bits that are coming out. 
if you don't want those to happen you can just simply increase the um, the suction scale the orbit's gonna control how much it rotates and the follow scale is gonna dictate like how fast how, how it how it follows it so let's go ahead and increase the point count a little bit to like 0 0.03 which is still low but for the sake of the tutorial that will do I am going to cache this and just do like particles and I'm gonna do um, just 150 and let's hit sim I'll be right back okay guys I'm back let's have a look at our simulation yeah it's looking pretty cool so let's have a look at the things that we can do post sim I'm not gonna use a particle fluid surface uh, I'm gonna do it with um, VDV from particles because sometimes for like small scale fluids like this it's it's just easier to do something like this let's reduce the scale the voxel scale to 0 0.01 and play with the particle radius to 0 0.08 um, maybe 0 0.1 Zero eight point two point five. There we go. Okay, so you can play with the particle scale radius here, and then you can do a VDV convert to get the actual geometry. And you can see that once we do this, we will get geo. But it does seem like very particle y, so we can do a VDV smooth SDF. Let's see what this gives us. So, already much better results. I'm gonna go ahead and save and refresh my scene, hitting Ctrl T. And you can see that this gives us um, the kind of liquidy result that I'm looking for. The higher point count that you go, the more of a beautiful result you're gonna get. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, cache this so that you guys can see it in motion. I'll be right back. Alright guys, I'm back. So as you can see, we have like a it's, a, it's a really easy to control, very artistic type looking kind of liquid. Um, in this case, I wanted it to be like kind of like thick, almost like mod so that we can texture it like gold and it's going to feel like some really cool gold type stuff moving around. Um, but if you want it to be like smoother or something, you can increase the particle count and just like increase the smoothing here because you'll have much more uh, detail to play with let's just have a look at it right here you can see it's cool it's a it's a really beautiful effect all right so now now that we have this base effect let's go ahead and just like drop down a gold material to this so i'm gonna do rs dome i'm just gonna grab just a default hdri from my library I'm gonna turn it off on the viewport and on the background here, my render. And um, let's come to our material and let's do redshift material and RS standard material. And we're gonna say gold. And in our material here, we're just gonna do material. And 
let's come to our out network and do redshift render. Gonna hit render, I mean save, and render view. Okay, so this is the default look that we get off the bat. And to make it gold, we're gonna come to our material. And we're just gonna get make the metalness to one. And then let's change the color to something like this. And uh, we can play with the roughness to see how, how much roughness you want on it. And That's it. Let's make it more of like a reddish gold. I think it would look a little bit nicer. And uh, something like that. Could reduce the color just a tiny bit. And then you can go in on your object and play with your dome or add extra lights to this. And. Um, get some really beautiful art directed gold curves. Alright guys, I hope you like this tutorial and I'll be back with more.